It's one of the most common questions I'm asked when I tell people that I'm a spaceflight historian, even though it has nothing to do with spaceflight history. What's the deal with Pluto? It seems Pluto is still a bit of a mystery to a lot of people. So here's a little bit on the deal with Pluto. Back in the day, we had six planets, the Earth, and Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn, the planets you can see at night with the naked eye. In 1781, we gained a seventh planet. William Herschel found something moving against the fixed stars, and in 1873, we officially had Uranus as another planet. But there was a bit of a problem. Astronomers tracked Uranus's orbit, but it didn't match up with what their calculations said it should do. They figured there had to be something beyond the orbit of Uranus that was affecting it and making it move the way it did. So, using Kepler and Newtonian physics, they plotted the orbit of this mysterious planet X, and then tried to find it. It was German astronomer Johann Gottfried Galle who finally found it, using the Berlin Observatory's resources. In 1846, we had Neptune. But again, there was a problem. Neptune's orbit didn't do what astronomers' calculations said it should do. There had to be something beyond Neptune affecting its orbit. So again, they plotted the placement of a planet X and looked for it. Percival Lowell took up the hunt for this planet X, using family money to establish an observatory in Flagstaff, Arizona. He died in 1916 without ever having found anything. But in 1921, astronomer Clyde Tombaugh picked up the case. He found Pluto. Initial calculations said that Pluto was an Earth-sized planet orbiting well outside the orbit of Neptune, but that picture soon began to change. In 1978, astronomers found that the bright spot of Pluto wasn't a planet, but a planet and a moon. Pluto also didn't have a regular orbit like all the other planets. Its orbit is such an elongated ellipse that it spends 22 of its 200-year orbit inside Neptune's orbit. It has a small rocky core, a layer of water ice, and a surface of frozen nitrogen. It's an ice ball with a very scant atmosphere made up of nitrogen, methane, ethane, and carbon monoxide. The more astronomers studied Pluto, the more it stood out like a sore thumb. So the question became, could there be other things like Pluto with similar orbits in similar part of space that we just needed to find? There are two people who are generally credited with killing Pluto, as it were. Neil deGrasse Tyson famously left Pluto out of a planetary display at the Hayden Planetarium, and Mike Brown found a planet outside Pluto. At least, he thought it might be a planet. But when the International Astronomical Union said that his planet, Eris, wasn't a planet, it also meant that Pluto couldn't be a planet, because Pluto was more like Eris than any of the other planets. And so we ended up with the definition of a dwarf planet. And now we have a whole different taxonomy in the solar system. But just because it's a dwarf planet doesn't mean Pluto is uninteresting or gone. It's still there and it's still fascinating. The full story on Pluto is a little bit more complicated, but in general, that's the story of Pluto.